or the his head, etc., etc. He never met the man who attacked him. He doesn't know who he is. He's in shock. He can't believe what happened. His wife, I was sitting with her. She literally has been crying all day. Tremendous pain. One of the things I was told by Mr. Schwartz was the person who was attacking him, who was yelling, who was out of control, that one of the things he would say, he was, first of all, he was speaking in what sounded to him like Arabic. It surely was not English. And one of the things that he kept on repeating was Allah, Allah. Okay? That makes me nervous. That concerns me greatly. Later on, when he chased the, the man who came to his help, and by the way, he literally told me, he says, that man saved his life because the beating stopped when that man came to the scene. So he literally saved his life. But I was just told by someone else who was at the bus stop that you see in the video, who spoke to me on the phone just now, that the man who was under arrest was yelling and screaming and kept on referring to Israel, Israel. Nobody understood what he was saying because it was in Arabic. But the Allah part is something that Mr. Schwartz heard again and again from this individual. The bottom line is, you have an innocent person who lives here who is viciously, maliciously attacked in the streets by an individual beyond comprehension. That's something, that, I mean, we're not living in a jungle over here. In a jungle, this stuff goes on. And then this man is chasing someone else to beat the hell out of that person. That was the purpose, to beat up somebody else. Now, I had been told specifically today, I didn't ask, I don't tell the police department how to classify crimes. That's not my job. There are professionals who do that. But the police department called me, one of the top people, I'm talking about an inspector, called me on his own and said it's being classified as a hate crime. I said, okay, fine. It's a horrible crime regardless. It's a terrible crime. This guy should be in jail for a long time. But I was told specifically it is a hate crime. About a half hour ago, we found out from the family, they think, they hear, they're not sure, that it may not be a hate crime. Well, I made a phone call to Chief of Brooklyn South, uh, one of the lieutenants who works directly for the chief, just about 10 minutes ago. I said, what's the story here? What's the story here? And by the way, this is before I heard about the Awa part. And this is before I heard about the Israel part. But they told me they were classifying it as a hate crime. They must have known something that I did not know. I was told 20 minutes ago, in my car on the way here, what's the story? We haven't made a final decision. We want to look at more video. We're coming out here tomorrow morning to look at more video. So <laughs> this is bizarre to say the least. I mean, this is crazy. It doesn't make any sense. They classify it. Now we're not sure this, that, the other thing. And now we know the part about what was the Allah, 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 and the part about Israel that was introduced at the second person, when the second person at the bus. So we are very, very, very concerned. We want this person to be dealt in the severest way by the DA. And we're calling on the DA to take this very seriously. The DA, DA Gonzalez, is a, is, is a wonderful individual. I know he'll do the right thing. But the police department classified this as a hate crime only a short while ago. And now, I hear about some of the other pieces to it that obviously should be of great concern. So that's basically the story. We have a couple of people who, you know, I'm standing here, I'm going back home, I'm upset, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fine. But we have somebody here who's not gonna be fine, who, when he puts his head on the pillow, as I told you, all he's gonna be thinking about is what happened earlier today. And you saw those pictures, what that looked like. He thought he was, it was over Finn, that's what he told me. We had a conversation, he said, I, I thought I was, it was finished. Mr. Schwartz, could we ask you, how are you feeling? He can't presume to order for you, or maybe for I'm telling him if he doesn't, with the English clearly, he can speak to me and I'll... Thank you.
I saw the, by the way, when I was in the house and I saw all this stuff, I thought maybe that was the condition. No, that's all related today. Under his yarmulke, I'm not going to, other, I mean, you, you saw, he's going to first feel this tomorrow. Can you tell us, to the best of your ability, what happened? <laughs> it helps us if we hear you. He says basically the same thing. He is literally, he lives here, he's on the way to the synagogue, something he does every single day, and he hears a screech of a car, like, a, like crazy. He thought that the car that the car service was picking up someone on the corner, so he didn't make a big deal. The next thing you know is the guy's on top of it. And can you describe what you were thinking and feeling this whole time? You must have been terrified. I feel I've been sitting there. Could you explain what you mean by that? It's either death or life. If I, if I wouldn't struggle back, definitely be life. I'd be dead. And the guy who came to your, you your aid. You said you men. Yes. You uh, so you're putting a plea out. As you can, as you, yeah, we, I know his name. We know his name. Uh, he looks Hasidic, right? That's what he is. The person who came to his defense was also Hasidic. I mean, people who are clearly identified from this community. If you have a knife, you would stab me right away. You don't die. Do you feel grateful to be alive? Thank you. Why do you think this man attacked you? I have no idea. The only thing I can tell you, probably I'm Jewish. Otherwise, I, I, I never met this guy before. I never saw this guy before. I never seen him before. I never felt. After all, I went to the hospital. I asked him, tell me, what did I do to you that you thought to murder me? Tell me. The guys over there thought that I wanted to I know, I know, I'm not okay. I just want to ask you. You should answer me. Why did he tell you? You answer me. You were just walking down the sidewalk. I was just walking down the sidewalk. You basically said it was a road rage that you had blocked. I have no... Wait, wait, wait. That is not... True. I have no he's problem. not in a car. He's no, not in a car. He's no, 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 no. I came for forty fifth. He came for forty first. So tell me where did I block? Him. Tell me where. You could see videos that I came for forty first. First of all, so where, I, where, where are, are the police saying that? Yeah, they, that's, that is said that it's you funny. I'm talking to. And you that's can see also the video that. To, I'm that talking to. Inspector passed, and to the office. three levels. Chief, the chief of Brooklyn South, Lieutenant Jablonski. I just got a phone with him. I was just told they have not, not classified. I said earlier they did classify. Now, I mean, this is, this is crazy. I, mean, I, I love the police department. They're, they're great. I don't know where this is coming from, but something is not right. Uh -huh. Something is not right. This man, no car, just walking peacefully uh -huh. in the street. 
getting in the way of somebody. You didn't get in the way of anybody. It's just not true. Yeah. 